Good morning, this is Angela with Parkrose Permaculture. I'm standing in my front yard food forest in Portland, Oregon, zone 8B. Before I start this video, I just wanna brag really quickly. Um, I got my house painted. So I'm, I'm really stoked about that. We've had a hideous, ugly pea soup green paint that was peeling and coming off all of the fascia. And um, last year I painted my front door blue and it is a historic color for my 1922 house. And I thought, God, I really love this color. And so once we decided to get our, our just our windows and our uh, fascia and corbels repainted, I used that historic color all over the house. And then I picked a historic yellow for the uh, rafter jacks. So I'm really excited that that is done. That means I can make some more videos and there won't be a whole crew of painters here. Uh, and it will be possible for me to film in peace and quiet, except for all of the ambient city noise that I normally have. So um, let me talk about this tree here in front of me today. So I got a number of comments and actually um, last year, two years ago maybe, when I made a quick video on planting this tree, I got a whole slew of comments that it was a bad idea. So I thought, since I got so many questions uh, in a recent video about my front yard, specifically focused on this tree, I thought let's talk about it for a minute. So this is a purple robe locust. And it is basically a variety of black locust that has these lovely purple blossoms instead of the traditional white blossoms. This is a nitrogen fixing pioneer species. Now, depending on where you live, it may be listed as an invasive. Black and honey locusts are listed in invasive, as invasives in some areas. Folks have said, Angela, you only have a quarter acre. Why did you put this tree that is gonna get 60 feet tall in your front yard? So a couple of things about it, why I picked it, why it may or may not be a good tree for your permaculture location, and what I'm getting out of this tree so far. So first of all, this uh, variety of locust is, is dropping petals all over me. So this variety of locust uh, does not get 60 feet tall like a regular black locust. My neighbor has one down the street and it is gorgeous. This is supposed to top out at 25 feet. Locusts are a problem in a lot of places because they set a lot of seed and also when you damage the roots, they send up a sucker and they become kind of a clonal patch of trees. So when planting this tree, you have to be really careful that you don't damage the roots. So even in a garden setting as small as mine, a 25 foot tree is a pretty whopper big tree. And considering most of the things I have planted so far do not um, stick to the height limits that are advertised, I'm assuming this tree, let's just pretend it'll get 40 feet tall. Why did I plant it then? Um, it's a nitrogen fixer in a very depleted landscape. So this is a fast growing pioneer tree. Leguminous nitrogen fixing trees and shrubs usually do best in a place with poor soil, full sun, and not much else is happy to grow there. They are a tree that when you talk about your permaculture garden planting, you are going to cycle this in as an early tree species and then cycle it out as your system matures. So for me, this tree, while I enjoy it and it is gorgeous, it is not going to be a permanent fixture in my landscape. I already know it will get too big upon maturity and also it will provide too much shade. Now as a fast growing tree, most fast growing trees tend to have brittle, relatively um, not useful wood, but locusts have one of the highest BTU firewood you can get and black locust also is incredibly rot resistant. So it's great for stakes and fence posts. Now I'm not gonna have it be so big that I'm gonna get very much firewood off of this tree, but if you are growing a full-size black locust and you want to know more about using black locust in your silvo pasture or your orchard or your permaculture farmstead, please check out Ben Falk's work on growing and utilizing black locusts because he has a much more extensive property than me and he will sing the praises of the black locust all day long. So this tree, um, it's putting nitrogen into the soil and also, it is providing shade. 
loads and loads of shade. My front yard garden, ooh, I'm getting a hug here from a leaf. My front yard garden um, is very, very intensely hot and sunny. And I planted a number of things here that actually do best in the understory. And I planted some trees that initially needed shade and protection, but as they get bigger, will move up and become the dominant uh, canopy tree species, but they're not there yet. So I needed a temporary canopy tree. In permaculture, we often use basically like a nurse tree or a tree that is there to increase fertility, provide chop and drop, and create initial shade and build biomass. This is a tree that serves that purpose. There are many other trees, like if you check out Jeff Lawton's work in um, the Middle East, he is really big on using nitrogen fixing fast growing trees for chop and drop. Same thing, I use this for chop and drop carefully because the larger branches have thorns and I don't want to step on them. But the leaf matter makes great chop and drop and releases nitrogen into the soil. Now, the blossoms are absolutely beautiful. Here you can see the blossoms. They hang like this and they are shaped not unlike a wisteria blossom because that is also a legume. So these pea-shaped flowers are actually edible for people. It is the only part of this tree that is edible. The rest of it, please don't eat, it's toxic. But you um, probably won't get a significant food source from this in terms of calories. It's just a garnish for salads or a uh, fritter. You can make fritters out of it, which are quite tasty. The main reason I enjoy the blossoms is because, well, they're gorgeous, but also because bumblebees love them. This and my uh, blue false indigo, also a nitrogen fixing leguminous plant, are two of bumblebees most favorite, most heavily visited flowers in my garden. So if you want food for native pollinators, this is a great choice. Let's talk about problems with this tree and what I'm going to do with it. So once my system is more mature and peach is an understory plant, but once my pawpaws have filled in and become the canopy layer trees in this part of my food forest, I will be cutting this tree down. I'll be removing it. In the interim, um, it'll probably be five years until I am ready to remove this tree and let other things fill in and take over the canopy. So in the meantime, what I've got to do is I've got to coppice this tree. So I coppice it right after it is done blooming and then it will get a whole new flush of growth. This helps keep the plant the size that I want it and I have a lot of chop and drop from it. Now if you live in a warmer climate with a longer growing season, you can coppice this plant up to three times a year. I tend to do it once, sometimes twice. That keeps it not too tall, tall enough to shade everything if I coppice it at about four feet um, off the ground. But in doing so, I want to be careful that I'm only coppicing the branches. In taking off the green material and the woody material above ground, that is promoting root dieback underground, which releases even more nitrogen. I don't want to chop the roots. This is where you have to be careful. If you chop the roots, it will send up a sucker. So far, I've only gotten one sucker and I'm diligent and I stay on top of it. This is a tree that you don't want to grow near your septic tank or near your water line because the roots are quite assertive. But for me, for my permaculture system right now, this is the tree that I need. It is uh, filling the space, providing shade, providing nitrogen, providing chop and drop biomass. And it is serving as a pioneer tree to help get the system advancing, help succession move on through. It is my early canopy tree and it will be cycled out later and all of the biomass from it will be utilized. So if you're looking for information on how to promote succession in your food forest, on how to think about utilizing early pioneer trees, trees that you are planting that you know from the get-go are not gonna be permanent, but will serve an important function in your food forest for the period of time that they are necessary, I encourage you to check out um, some of Jeff Lawton's work because he talks about it for a much warmer climate zone than me in Australia and in the Middle East. Check out Ben Falk if you are in North America or Europe because he also will talk about utilizing the black locust. Thank you for watching. If you got something out of this video, please give it a thumbs up and please consider subscribing. It helps me make more videos. Thanks.